little earlier now. expect anybody to help with me and if you are thank you if you're not that's okay too I'm just kind of messing around today I can't sleep it's my excuse Training is different for everyone. I was in Hawaii one year. And one of the gentlemen that kind of influenced me a little bit he used to get up at four o'clock in the morning just to go practice his Tai Chi, which I thought was pretty cool. I asked him about it. It was like, hey, I was curious, you know, I was young. Are you really that dedicated to your art? And he laughed at me and he said, no. And he says, it's the pain that gets me up in the morning. And then I practice and then, and then the pain starts to go away. So, interesting perspective. Anyway. So, many years later, that's kind of what, that's kind of what makes me tick. I do have chronic pain every day of my life. I'm not making excuses about it. I'm old. Being old is going to come with pain. If you've been an athlete, you're going to have arthritis. If you haven't been an athlete, you might not have arthritis. But you might. So you need to have a plan. If you don't care about that, that's okay. In the fight game, you should have a plan. You're gonna need a plan. And the reason that you're gonna need a plan is because you're gonna you're gonna do things that are gonna damage your body in the fight game. There's no way around it. So, even if you don't engage in fighting, but you just like training and you hit heavy bags, eventually that will also lead to some challenges for you. Again, that's why I use this. Feedback. You hit hard no matter what you hit. So whether you hit the curtain, or you hit the ball, if you learn how to hit, it's gonna have reaction. It's gonna have, especially when you hit a person that's coming forward. So it's about tensing your whole body at the right moment. Speed, timing involved. You said it all works. You gotta be able to do that in the presence of pain and arthritis if you're old. So it takes me a while to warm up in the mornings. And as I do so, I visualize certain things.
mantis principles, footwork, breathing, timing. I've imagined a lot of things. What do you what do you do? Where are you when you train? Try to be nowhere. Once the training starts. Once you start moving. You should have less going on in your head. Once you start moving. Again, the ladder movements don't have to be fast. You just have to get comfortable with being stable, even if you have an aging body like mine. I tell you what, when I'm doing hurts, me, physically, hurts me. I don't care. So, if you're involved in sports, one of the things that you're going to have to remember is that if you want to continue to have fun throughout your life, because that's what you're doing it for, you have to stay injury free or you have to figure a way to work around and through all the challenges you're going to have as you get older. So you don't break yourself or have a heart attack as you get older, like a lot of you guys are going to. You don't realize that. Some of you younger guys in your 30s especially, and you're just kind of maybe in denial of the truth. It doesn't matter. You're going to discover it soon. So, younger fellas, you're not going to have the same driver, so you know. You guys who are just getting into sports, who maybe it's a fight sport, maybe it's soccer, you have to have something that gets you up in the morning and gets you to do things that would otherwise bore people so that you can be better than your average person. Because if you're playing any level of elite sport, you are trying to be better than your average person. That means you have to listen to voices that are stronger within than outside. In all arts, in all sports, you have to have an athletic delusion. You have to have something that sets you apart from all the rest of the voices that you're going to hear. They're going to say, stop. Don't do that. Every now and then, you'll hear encouraging voices. But not with people who are competing against you. They're not going to encourage you. They're going to try to get in your head. And we live in competitive America. So... A lot of people are competitive in all avenues of life. So I think it's important to have strong foundations so that no matter where you go, it's not a competition. You're having fun. So you, you're able to persevere. That's what you're going to try to do. If you're younger, 
you're trying to persevere training. So then, if you can get through what all your idiotic coaches are doing, and then find your own groove, you're going to discover greatness. So that's what, that's what young athletes, trust me, are seeking, is some level of, of greatness within. And a lot of them are seeking it because their parents are pushing them in that direction, but it's still a journey they're going to take. If you're pushing them in that direction, don't you want your kids to have the right messages in their head? You know, be like, hey, go play sports. Like, why? Are sports, like, inherently good? It doesn't seem they are. I mean, we have a lot of athletes that don't do inherently good things, don't we? That kind of hurts. So, that kick. Can be at the groin. So you can set that up and then kick into the groin. You can kick to the inside of the knee with that. If somebody's stepping forward. Their legs down and come take you down instead of trying to hook with the inside kicking with the toe so as you step in throw that one so those are nice kicks all based on the ability to turn this hip and drive through the target that you're hitting with the toe ball foot I practice enough times to feel fluid and then I kind of stay relaxed so I can practice for speed. That's what I'm doing. Do your own thing. That's what I'm doing. That kick, I'm going to try to drive up into the jaw. Behind it if I can. Looks like a hook. Same idea. So if I can get you to step back and then step in with a big punch as I retreat, I'll pull back. And as that punch is coming in, I'm going to come up either over it or on the inside of it, jaw hunting. <clears throat> That's the way it's supposed to work anyway. So it's that idea that you can fade back and kick. That's how that works. Oh. So you catch guys coming in. Doesn't take much practice. I have to do it. Learn to get stable. 
and breathe the whole time. You have to always stay relaxed as you're breathing. Otherwise, your kicks won't be relaxed. So if you're, if you're training and you're holding your breath so that you can get those awesome breath sounds, you got to stop. You got to keep your breathing constant, fluid, and relaxed. But also full and deep so that you're always doing correct breathing exercises. Despite... Whatever you're trying to accomplish. And pull your feet in. Sort of. That feels good. Stretching into that movement. Trying to get your opponent's hands to drop with movements that look similar. So you can catch an opponent. Just sort of, it doesn't even have to be close. I feel like you're feeling it out like a, like a weak jab. The important thing is that it looks vulnerable because you want them to lower their head and come forward because they're no longer afraid of whatever that that kick represents so it certainly doesn't scare them so then as you step in with that weak kick if they've trained for this they're going to come rushing in and or they're going to try to close the gap such that they can land their own strikes or take you down or whatever they have formulated in their head. And that's what you're trying to leverage. That's the mindset that you're trying to get into is what their response to that weak kick is. And from there, you just use the low high movements. So that's that. That's that thing that happens. And again, you're kind of jaw hunting with the ball of foot. You can use your shin if you want, but I use the ball on my foot always. <clears throat> in, in practice on the right side, again, you don't have to do much other than stretch into it, get comfortable with it. My body hates doing this because of the knee that's jacked up, but if, if you've been following along, you'll see that I struggle on this side. But that doesn't stop me from training it at all. I just struggle. So, you're going to have that left side open.
that hook as it comes down like an axe kick draws your opponent's guard as you step in you've already dealt with this even if they've grabbed it if they've grabbed it you're moving in in a seated position under their arm anyway from this whether they know it or not you'll see why like a weak kick the axe kick doesn't but the idea that you come up and down afterwards is what makes this technique work so you're already positioning to the outside of their frame and as you move this kick looks like it's a teep or a front snap kick and it turns into a hooking motion that sets you in close enough to strike floating ribs and then over the top anything that's anything that's there so again now that's how that looks Fun, yeah. Sprint. Volume punch. So, again, speed, speed, comes from being relaxed. You still have to be fast even if you're tired. You can take some snap off your punches. Volume punching and then throw a big punch, but bam, and then take some off. You don't have to throw all bombs. So with the relaxed movements are the same as the bombs. So the emotional intensity and the breathing you put into it, the changes. So. In recovery, I'm only gonna attack with a full breath. So again, this is where if you've taken singing, you'll understand how this works. So right now I've talked my way out of breath. So if I punch, it's gonna be weak because it's unsupported by the cavity and movement that's possible. Now it's completely constricted. So if I breathe in, you get that big Buddha belly, you don't see it in fighters as much. They don't show you that. It's okay, it still happens. You don't get a big lung full of air and go tense because that's when you're gonna try to hunt them in the lungs. But when they're, when they're moving through their cyclical breathing pattern, or when you are, even if it's shallow, bam, 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 down, up, 
Wham! Down. Up. <laughs> That's pleasant. Catch it, quick. So then, an easy, easy exercise. Lungs full of air. Relax all the way out. That way you're always breathing. So then you never attack in the same place twice on the breathing pattern so that this guy doesn't time you, but at the same time, you also never attack on the downstroke of air. So you're trained then to always First of all, it's going to make you dizzy. You'll get used to it. Watch Wim Hof. God, is that terrible and slow. But the uppercut so you can hunt that set the position correctly move in sink down when you come up come up bang but immediately right back over the top so get used to doing that so you don't do one then the other and then once you've set that up a couple times so once he gets used to feeling that, he's going to want to flinch towards that side. And that's when you just switch up on your, your uppercut. So it's that idea of using high-low movement just like the kick. So the same idea applies. So now instead of coming across this way from the uppercut, I'm going to go here. And that's, that's going to create a little bit different channel. So especially if he flinches, so when I'm hoping he will, you know. You can kind of throw that from a distance, you know. Sneak him in. Sneak him in with that long uppercut that you're trying to throw from distance. No matter what he's trying to do here, if he steps in to kick that, you're going you're gonna to throw that. Or you're going to step in to kick this, and you're going you're gonna to throw that. You're just going to try to get his direction. 
So then you have that thing that happens. So again, you want to flinch them to one side if you can. It hurts when they walk into that. Don't break your hand. If he ducks his head, you're going to break your hand. Hurts. You mess up. Bam. Gotta calm down a bit. How do you calm down in the morning? So I move in towards my opponent's weapons hand and then quickly I'm gonna hit it's like that. So those motions then that you're learning when you do repetitive practice, they don't seem like much, except that you're kind of training your body just like before where, where you're learning to switch up one direction then the other. You're training your body to move quickly back and forth so that you can catch your opponent unawares in in times when they don't expect that movement to come. So and you don't always have to have correct form of hands and everything. You know, you can put your left hand in your pocket like it got chopped off and do just fine. So as long as you have good technique and you maintain your distance. You kind of need two hands to use mantis stick, but you don't you don't need it. The last mantis I had left in a cage one time only had one arm. Lefty. Kind of interesting. So, one, two, three, four. So that one, two, three, four. One, two, or one, two. It doesn't matter. So, block. You can see that one, two. And then, block. You see that? That would be your three movement, your four movement are both down towards the weapon arm. So, but they don't have to be again. So one, two, three, four. Those can all be on top of the head. When you look at weapon sparring and you see these guys doing that technique and you don't think that's really much, okay, but until you've been struck on top of your head with one of these rattan sticks with a strike like that without wearing a helmet, you're going to discover something in between the reality of your fiction and theirs. You're going to get knocked the hell out. And you're going to bleed like crazy if you don't. So if, you, if you're one of those guys that have a really nice tough head and you can take shots or like that to your head with just a little light rattan staff and it doesn't crack your noggin, then, then you're going to bleed anyway. And that's going to be a problem very quickly. Not because you're going to have blood loss, but it's going to interrupt your vision. It's hard to fight with blood running in your eyes. Ask anybody. So, 
Because striking using stick that's that's repetitive that I use, then one, two, three, four, defanging the snake movements, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, those type of movements. So you also have the long movements. So you can do that from the inside and outside. So uppercuts. So when you're inside, you can do movements. You can hook movements like behind your opponent's head, knee, knee, tack, tack, grab their stick, tack. Striking the leg. Do all kinds of crazy stuff with these. These are dangerous. What time is it? You know when you're training. You get bored and you're like, what time is it? I'm gonna push through that. Sometimes, if you're working on ball control, learn to move around the ball without really touching it much. Dancing with your ball. And then, don't do that. But learn to affect the ball with tiny movements so that when you're on the sprint, you don't have to use big movements. The ball then can kind of bounce off you You'll always sort of conditioned your mind so you'll always be in the state where you'll have a relative relaxation of body and mind so your speed stays the same and the ball just sort of does what it's supposed to do I don't know that might be true Okay, you get crazy now. Especially when you're training. Athletic delusion. That's what keeps you going. Things that other people don't see. Sometimes it's just you seeing yourself. It's still delusional. Until you make it a reality. You live through your eyes. So keep doing whatever you're doing. just thrashing about in your garage at odd hours of the day.
First Mantis. Play with those principles. If you know them, you know them. If you don't, you don't. Right side, forward, left side, forward, they're all the same. So you have that one, you have that two, you have that three, four, five, and six. So I think that's what I showed you. I could be wrong. There's more. Those are basic. Those are easy. That's mantis right there in terms of footwork. Just basic handler. And then you couple those with your boxing. So once you get good at one, if you see where you're at, two and three, you're right there. And then if you've positioned for a strong drive forward and your opponent is kind of left unawares as to where you are, you can make attacks down low to his base. If he gives back, a lot of guys will not do that, but they'll duck out going out the other direction so they'll give you their front so you know you step off to that side and a lot of guys will start heading with their heads down this way and you can just throw a kick straight up the center in between their guard oh man you're gonna break a nose right now Eight. Not enough. so fall over there. Ooh. It's getting crazy. Getting tired. I'm getting old. <sighs> Gotta challenge yourself. Gotta cause your heart to beat. You gotta get a little crazy sometimes. Okay. People don't understand. They don't understand. Do it anyway. If you're playing jazz, drawing, painting, fighting arts, whatever you're doing, rock on, baby. Just somewhere else and get out of my garage see you tomorrow I think maybe I won't see you tomorrow